एवरी वन वेलकम टू होम स्कूल सो टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी विल टेक अप द नेक्स्ट फाइलम दैट इज फाइलम मोलस्का सो वील फर्स्ट सी वॉट आर द जनरल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ दिस फाइलम एंड देन वी विल गो टू अदर फीचर्स सो वी हैव सीन दैट ऑर्थ्रोपोडा वॉज द लार्जेस्ट फाइलम अमॉन्ग ऑल दो सो दैट वॉज द फर्स्ट लार्जेस्ट एंड द मोलस्का फाइलम मोलस्का दिस इज सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट फाइलम सेकेंड largest phylum okay so apart from this the members which belong to the phylum mollusca they can be either terrestrial they can be either terrestrial or they can be aquatic also they can be terrestrial they can be aquatic also most of them they show organ system level of organ system level of organization and they are triploblastic they are triploblastic and they also exhibit bilateral symmetry they exhibit bilateral symmetry as well as these are ciliomids these are ciliomids right so organ system level of organization they are triploblastic that is that is three germ layers bilateral symmetry they get equal uh, left and right sides when they are being cut through the main axis they are ciliomids that is a true ciliomis present here then moving on to the body structure so here in case of the mollusks the body exhibit three parts or the, they have three parts in the main body that is a head a muscular foot and a visceral hump so this we can uh, just divide it into three parts the first part is the head and then muscular foot and visceral hump visceral hump so about the head so the head is or uh, the important organ which is the important sensory organ which is present in the head is eyes the head mainly consists of the sensory organ that is the eyes muscular foot this majorly helps in the locomotion it majorly helps in the locomotion and about the visceral hump visceral hump is the part of the mollusk which is having all the uh, internal organs like digestive system respiratory system and all others so they have systems like digestive system and other system so anyways we will just see what exactly is this uh, visceral hump or, or what are the parts of it fine so visceral hump let's say uh, this usually secretes a soft a very spongy kind of layer around the visceral hump so let's imagine this is the visceral hump okay this is the visceral hump so around the visceral hump it usually will secrete a soft spongy layer like this okay so this is a soft spongy layer which is called as mantle this is mantle and this one this is the visceral hump okay this vh is visceral hump and this visceral hump secretes a soft spongy layer which is called as the mantle around it and now between the visceral hump and the mantle there is a space here isn't it there is a empty space between the mantle and the visceral hump and that space between mantle and the visceral hump is called as the mantle cavity this is called as this layer so this is all the empty space this is called as mantle cavity okay this is mantle cavity and in the mantle cavity usually the gills are present we have we get to see 
the presence of gills in the mantle cavity and these gills have the function of respiration as well as they help in the excretion and this particular mantle now all right this mantle so this will secrete a kind of uh, a very strong substance or in other terms i can call it as a calcareous substance so around the mantle so firstly visceral hump is secreting the mantle layer mantle is in turn secreting one more hard layer which is called as the visceral hump okay that is called as visceral hump so this is called as the calcareous calcareous shell we will write it here calcareous shell so this since it is quite harder all right since it is quite harder it is uh, usually it is well, or like they have a substance like an exoskeleton there actually and it is it protects the body of the members of the mollusks inside in inside it so externally we have this calcareous shell inside that we have the main body which is being protected by the calcareous shell all right so it is the second largest phylum these can be terrestrial or they can be aquatic and mainly they exhibit organ level, organ system level of organization they are triploblastic in nature they show bilateral symmetry and these are ciliomates and if you come to the body so the main body has head muscular foot and visceral hump head it usually has it it is carrying the major sensory organ that is eyes muscular foot this is mainly for the locomotion then the visceral hump this is for this this is actually carrying all the organs of the mollusk members then visceral hump is very important because it secretes a soft spongy layer called as the mantle and that mantle secretes one more hard layer which is called as the calcareous shell and between the between the visceral hump and the mantle there is a cavity called as a mantle cavity fine this is about the external features of the or external characteristics of members of the mollusk so now we will see the internal characteristics like digestive system circulatory system and all other systems firstly we will see the digestive system so digestive system is very well developed here so since they are exhibiting the organ system level of the organization definitely most of the organs will be very well developed here so the digestive system is very well developed and a rasping structure a rasping structure is present in the mouth which is called as the radula a rasping structure a rasping structure called as radula a rasping structure that is radula is present is present in mouth okay so you should be remembering this particular word here radula very very important word so radula is present in the mouth of the mollusks fine then moving on to the circulatory system circulatory system is a open circulatory system circulatory system is a open circulatory system we have already discussed what is open and a closed circulatory system then moving on to the respiratory system respiratory system majorly gills are present we had seen that in the mantle cavity gills were present isn't it so gills mainly help in the respiratory system also there is a pulmonary sac there is a pulmonary sac present for the or which is helping in the respiration then moving on to the excretory system again gills help in the excretion along with the gills they also have kidneys 
along with the gills they also have kidneys then about the nervous system for the nervous system they have ganglions they have ganglions ganglion is a singular and ganglia is a plural all right then moving on to the reproduction so here the mollusk the members of the mollusca phylum are not hermaphrodites that is sexes are separate here reproduction sexes are separate sexes are separate here i so since they are separate definitely we should have a male member and we should have a female member then moving on to the fertilization okay so in case of the mollusk fertilization can be internal or external it can be internal or external and how about the development so development here is it can be direct or it can be indirect so development it can be direct or it can be indirect so these are the internal features or internal characteristics of the members of mollusks so digestive system a very well developed or we can call it as a complete digestive system and they have a structure called as radula a rasping structure called as the radula in the mouth of the members of mollusks circulatory system open respiratory system they have gills as well as the pulmonary sac then the excretory system they have again gills as well as kidneys for the excretion nervous system they have ganglia as well as they have nerves they have nerves reproduction it is the sexes are separate and definitely it should be a sexual reproduction then fertilization is internal or it can be external development again it can be a direct development and it can be also indirect development okay so one uh, one more very peculiar characteristic of the members of the mollusks is it shows aestivation they show aestivation what exactly is the aestivation aestivation is nothing but we in very simple terms we call it as summer sleep we call it as summer sleep so what is this means so uh, during the summer season when the conditions are not favorable for the growth and development of the members of mollusks so they will go inside the burrow okay they get they will go inside the burrow and for a period of time they usually uh, will uh, hibernate we can call it as hibernate also like they all give the same meaning or like they usually go in a sleep mode for a long duration till the conditions will get favorable for them for their growth and development they will be inside they will be they will be in the sleep they won't be exposed to the external conditions so such a condition is called as the aestivation and many members of the mollusca phylum will exhibit the aestivation or in other terms which is called as the summer sleep so one example which exhibit the aestivation is a pila pila which in other terms is also called as the apple snail so we will see a couple of examples we will again uh, examples which are being given in the ncert we will take pila and we will take octopus also first example we will take of the pila which is also called as the apple snail so a few important things which you have to remember about the pila is it has a coiled shell okay so first character is it has coiled shell coiled shell then the second characteristic is very important this is called as a amphibian mollusk it is called as amphibian amphibian mollusk 
what is the meaning of amphibian mollusk it means that this particular organism that is pila right so this pila can survive in the water that is it can grow in the water or on the on the land that is it can be aquatic or it can be terrestrial so this organism is called as the amphibian mollusk then as i said this will show it shows or it exhibits astivation astivation that is summer sleep okay that is that is the summer sleep so these are uh, three important features you have to remember about the pila then about the octopus the second example is we will take octopus so if if you uh, see about the octopus for the octopus an external shell is absent here here shell is absent we had seen that the mantle used to secrete a calcareous shell in the members of the mollusk so most of them they have the shell very few doesn't have the shell like structure and octopus is one among them okay and the body of the octopus is mainly globous in nature it has body is body is globous and one more important characteristic you have to remember is they have eight arms they have eight arms i hope everyone has seen the structure of the or everyone have seen the octopus so the body is something like it is globus like this isn't it so from the body we get to see the arms which are which are eight in number so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and then 8 so these are arms and these arms are supposed to have the suckers they are supposed to have the suckers and one more uh, important thing which you have to remember about the octopus is they usually produce a, a bluish black colored cloud actually a bluish a bluish black cloud a bluish black cloud of ink or pigment a uh, ink or pigment is produced by the octopus to escape to escape so if you if you see the octopus if it has to escape from a prey or anything if it has to escape from the uh, animal which is uh, other animal or anything which is hunting on it then it will produce a bluish black color cloud surround around the octopus which is actually like ink like substance or pigment like substance by producing that cloud it will escape from the from other animals or other organisms okay so this is about the phylum mollusca fine right? so next we will move on to the phylum echinodermata echinodermata it means that these are the uh, organisms which have got the spiny skin so if you split the word echinodermata echino the word echino means spiny and dermata we know that it is skin so this is like these are the organisms or members which have spiny skin so they are called as the echinodermata so if you look into the characteristics of the echinodermata so these mainly have endoskeleton they have got endo skeleton and these endo or this endoskeleton is mainly made up of the calcareous ossicles endoskeleton of calcareous c a l c a r e o u s 
ossicles ossicles is small small pieces all right small small pieces so the calcareous ossicles so endo endoskeleton is made up of calcareous ossicles and as a we um, so as we has we have seen here they have spiny skin they have spiny skin then so these are mainly marine organisms they are mainly marine and mostly these are present in the benthic areas okay so what is the benthic area or the benthic zone that is the deepest part or the deeper parts of the ocean we call them as the benthic zones or the benthic areas so the uh, members which belong to the echinodermata these are mainly marine in nature and these are usually present in the benthic zones of the oceans i'm moving on to the other characteristics so they mainly exhibit organ system level of organization that is organ system level of organization okay then how about the symmetry here so here there is a small uh, you know confusion which you have to remember actually the adult one find the adult here coming to the symmetry adult members they show the radial symmetry adult members show the radial symmetry and the larvae they show bilateral symmetry larvae show bilateral symmetry and adult show lateral symmetry and then these are again triploblastic and these are ciliomates these are triploblastic and these are ciliomates triploblastic and these are ciliomates then one another very important characteristic of the members of the echinodermata are they have a water vascular system okay so i will wipe this these points they have water vascular system so this is uh, something which is actually confined to the members of the echinodermata so we will write it first water vascular system water vascular system since they are present since they are mostly uh, marine so they should have a proper water channelizing system and this water vascular system it is developed it is developed from the uh, ciliom part that is because since it has a true ciliom it these are ciliomates so they have a true ciliom and the this water vascular system it develops from it develops from ciliom ciliom or you can also call it as coelom okay and this mainly helps in the locomotion it helps in loco motion so what exactly is the water vascular system that we will study by taking one example a, a couple of minutes later fine we will take one example and then we will study the water vascular system moving on to the other internal features of the members of the echinodermata so here the firstly we will again take digestive system the digestive system is a complete digestive system here it is a complete digestive system what does a complete digestive system means it means that it has two openings one is the mouth opening other one is the anus opening so mouth opening is lower actually so it has uh, one anus and then it has mouth so here so uh, in case of the echinodermata the anus is actually upper okay anus is situated on at the top that is upper part of the body has anus or in other terms we can also say it is a dorsal part dorsal part mouth is present in the lower or it is present on the 
ventral side okay on the dorsal side and ventral side so since here the mouth is present on the lower side and the uh, anus is present on the upper side these are actually called as the deuterostomes you have to remember this it is a uh, it is the word deuterostome is only confined to the phylum echinodermata and chordata these are the only two phylums which uh, which are the members of these two phylums are called as the deuterostomes all the other are called as the proteostomes i'll explain what exactly is it okay so these are called as deuterostomes deuterostomes so here uh, only echinodermata echinodermata and chordata and chordata are uh, like are are called as the deuterostomes so what happens so, so during the embryonic development fine during the embryonic development when the elementary canal is actually formed so there is one opening which is formed here so let's imagine uh, the during the embryonic development fine so this is the formation and there is one elementary canal which is formed now so during this elementary canal formation so one small pore is being formed at one of the opening or one small opening or one small pore is formed like this and this pore like structure is called as the blastopore it is called as blastopore so now uh, how exactly we differentiate the organisms into deuterostomes and into proteostomes so if okay if the blastos if the blastopore opens into or it, if that develops into anus then we call it as the deuterostome and if the like the blastopore develops into mouth then we call it as the proteostomes so this particular blastospore there are two chances for the blastospore if the blastospore if the blastopore if it develops into anus one thing this can develop as the anus and it can go here and other end will be the mouth the one more chances this can be the mouth and then it will grow and the other end is the anus so it can be mouth or it can be anus so if the blastopore develops as the anus then we call it as deuterostomes deuterostome members and if the blastopore develops into the uh, mouth then we call it then such members are called as the proteostomes 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 or proterostomes anyway any how you can uh, pronounce it so now since here the uh, in case of the members of the echinodermata since the blastopore is actually developing as the anus that is it is developing as the anus here and so first developed organ will be anus and then later developed one will be mouth hence we call them as deuterostome along with the members of echinodermata even the members of the chordata are also called as the uh, uh, deuterostomes and all the other phylums they are called as the proteostomes all right so this is about the digestive system then moving on to the excretory system okay moving on to the excretory system so here in case of the excretory system uh, since like these are aquatic only because most of them are marine so what happens usually they have to um, like they have to uh, 
give away or they have to excrete the nitrogenous waste in the form of the ammonia only we have already seen it in the previous classes also if it is terrestrial we call them as urotelic and if they are aquatic we call them as ammonotelic so since these are aquatic we these are organisms are ammonotelic these are ammonotelic and uh, one particular excretory organ is actually absent here okay an excretory organ is absent in case of the um, echinodermata fine then moving on to the circulatory system circulatory system is a uh, open type of circulatory system then nervous system for the nervous system there are two nerve rings there are i'll wipe it off nervous system they have nervous system they have two nerve rings two nerve rings and the two types of nerve rings are one is a oral ring and one is a oral ring out of these two other one is aboral ring we will see what is the oral line the aboral ring in the diagram when we see it there fine then moving on to the reproduction so reproduction it is mostly the uh, sexual mode of reproduction it is sexual reproduction and then the fertilization he is here external fertilization is external it is external and how about the development development is usually indirect with a free swimming larva stage development is indirect it is indirect with with a free swimming with a free swimming larval stage okay it is a free swimming larval stage so we have the development only in the indirect means there is no direct development fine so these are few internal features of the members of the echinodermata so now we will take one example uh, again of your ncrt we will take the starfish which has been given and then we will see how exactly all these systems are been working in the echinodermata the scientific name of the starfish is asterias so the starfish we know that uh, it is pentamerous in nature that is it has five arms and they exhibit radial symmetry they exhibit radial symmetry and they are pentamerous they are pentamerous in nature and here as we have seen uh, that these are deuterostomes mouth should be on the lower side and anus should be on the upper side that is on the aboral side so mouth is mouth is present on the lower side and anus is present on the aboral side all right it is present on the aboral side hence we call them as the deuterostomes so we will see the structure of the starfish here so we uh, we also know that starfish it has it is pentamerous in nature so it has five arms so these are the five arms so i hope the structure is quite okay fine so now these five arms are be can are being connected by the radial canals so we have a uh, radial canals which are present in all the five arms which are present in all the five arms and in turn these radial canals are been these are been again attached by one central canal these are attached by one central canal so we have one central canal here okay so this these are these are radial canals these are radial canals and this is a central canal central canal 
Then speaking about the water vascular system, we had a water vascular system, isn't it? So the water vascular system means it is helping in the inflow and outflow of the water. So to take the water inside the echinodermates or to take the water specifically, we'll, we are speaking about the starfish here. So there is one particular structure, all right? There is one structure like this, which is called as, okay, this structure, it is called as metriporite. So this is one small canal and one tubular structure is present and this structure or this head structure this is called as we will write it here this is called as metriporite this is called as metriporite and this small canal okay this small canal this is called as stone canal this is called as stone canal and this is called as the medriporite. So here to the radial canal, so there are some, some small uh, sub channels with the balloon heads are present. Like, so if this is a radial channel, it is present all over. To this we have some small channels again which are carrying a head like structures like this. This is present all over. So on all the channels, on all the radial channels, these are present. And these are being called as the tube feet. They are called as tube feet. And they help in the locomotion. They help in the locomotion. So now, two arms which to which the medriporite is center okay it has five arms and those two arms to which the medriporite is in the center those two are called as biviums so here medriporite is here so these two are called as bivium and remaining three these three okay these three which are devoid of the medriporite so these are called as trivium these are called as trivium and those two are called as the bivium. So what exactly happens here? So from the metriporite, fine. So from the metriporite, the water enters into the central canal. Alright, water enters into the central canal from the metriporite and from the central canal it enters to all of the radial canals and from the radial canals they enter into the tube feet. Tube feet are present everywhere and on all the radial canals the tube feet are being present. So from the metriporite to the central canal, from the central canal to the radial canals, from the radial canals to the tube feet. So likewise the water will enter into the uh, body of the starfish. Now, when the water has to be ejected out, okay, now this is, we are speaking about the intake of the water. When the water has to be ejected out, so then what happens? So, uh, when water moves out of the body, so there is one movement which is created. So, to push the water out of the body, definitely a kind of force is required. So, when the force is applied, the, there is a movement which is seen. So, that movement helps in the shifting of the place of the starfish so we have seen that these echinodermats they usually are present in the benthic zones isn't it that is at the depth of the oceans so there in the depth of the oceans these starfish will actually crawl they will crawl so how will they crawl that is they crawl by this particular system so when the water moves out, there is one ejectory force which is applied and to that ejectory force, what the, the starfish will shift its position that is called as the movement or locomotion here. And this system or this particular water uh, vascular system or this whole system of the starfish is also called as the ambulatory system. It is also called as ambulatory system okay so this is about the 
starfish right or this is about the phylum echinodermata i have taken this particular example only because the words again i'm repeating here all the namings which i have done here for all the, not only for the phylum echinodermata for all the other phylums we had i had drawn the diagrams isn't it actually in the ncrt we don't have the detailed diagrams but still i'm just drawing the detailed diagrams and naming them because they are very important in in the uh, need examination right so you have to remember all these parts of the particular organism fine so stone canal medriparite and tube feet radial canal central canal so these these words are really important fine and ambulatory system ambulatory system which is the water vascular system in case of the echinodermates okay so this is about the phylum echinodermata in the next video we will uh, take up the remaining phylums like hemichordata chordata and others okay so we will stop the class by this and we will again meet in the next class keep watching the videos and subscribe the channel as well as share the videos